Hello and welcome to another Monday live stream. My name is Shane Olson and today we're going to be continuing our Pee Wee Herman sculpt that we started last week by the extraordinary character designer Jeffrey John Pigeon. So um, let's keep it going. Welcome, welcome. All right, I was working on this just a little bit before the stream. I was trying to figure out the coat. All right. And I want to put some, uh, this, this pattern on here eventually. I'd like to, uh, do that. Hey, what's up, Neil? Welcome, welcome. Get his hands in place. Okay. What is going on today, you guys? Anything fun? What's new? What's fun? Oh, went too far. Sometimes if you get too close, it'll hop the border. Let's do a smaller brush size. That's yeah, better. All right. Hey, what's up, Chuck? How you guys doing? Okay, I'm just making this bottom collar piece. Something like that. Hey, Sir Brad, how are you? What's, what's going on? I saw you guys all sculpting this morning. That's amazing. <clears throat> I need to have like official sculpting times so people know when to join, you know? I just wanted to sculpt and hang out with everyone in Discord, but my cable for my tablet broke. Oh man, that's no fun. Oh goodness, I'm like, where's my custom menu? Sometimes the custom menu just doesn't want to work. All you got to do is go to Preferences, Config, Restore, Custom UI, and that just fixes it. Yeah, I even saw Nahanda hanging out with you guys. That's cool. Let's see, split. Okay. <clears throat> I just barely asked Jeffrey if he would send me the pattern. <laughs> so I don't know if he'll get to it before the live stream is over, but. Hopefully. Just pulling this out away from his coat a little bit. So are any of you going to make the uh, Zebra Summit this year? Really, really trying hard to go. I think I'm good, but there's just a few lines I got across. Thanks, Neil. Hey, Keen. I am modeling Sir P.W. Herman. Okay. I wish I could like tighten up these these dots so it was sharp but I can't do it until I apply the thickness which I can do I guess let me turn smooth subdivs down and that's about a good thickness hit apply turn on dynamic again but this time turn off the thickness and turn up the subdivs and then well, let's turn it off for a second and then crease these by hand here. Uh, let's see. Crease, edge, that one, that one. And then I think I'll just crease one down here, that one. That works. Try 
crank this up to four. There we go. So nobody here is going to the summit? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> Okay, I'm just trying to line this up with the coat here. And then we'll just do it again for the upper part of it. I'm going to overlap this. That looks good. Brad, dude, <clears throat> that's, a long, that's a long ways for you to go, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Two grand for a flight. Yeesh. I don't want to tell you how much. I'm only I'm only two states away. So there's there's Utah, Nevada, and California, so we just have to fly over one state. And the cost of an airline ticket I don't even want to tell you. Because I feel horrible. But it's only, I found one for $97. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm horrible. That's a little less than 2000 <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let's do this one. His, I need to make this go behind his neck. Yeah, I just started teaching at a local university. Whoops. So I just need to make sure that's the last kind of thing I need to take care of before I can make sure I can go. Yeah, coast to coast. I did that once. I was going to Florida from here to like Walt Disney World is a long trip. That, that took a while. Okay, thanks Neil. Yeah, if, if you guys are interested in uh, using any of my brushes down here or my user interface, I give it away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Go get them over there. I'm actually sponsoring the summit again this year, giving away some seats to my course. I teach an online course called the 3D Character Workshop. It's a peewee. Last year for Halloween. I loved it. Nice. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But how fun. That's super fun. Hey, Ashley, how are you? I haven't been able to catch your streams lately, Ashley, because I've been... Uh, I recently got a, a side gig doing an adjunct professor at a local university. It's on Wednesday nights, Mondays and Wednesdays, so... I've been missing you. Yeah, Fancy. <laughs> That's fun. It's fun. You haven't been... Well, that, that too, I guess. <laughs> I can't seem to, to, to uh, not stream. 
I know, I didn't even say snake hook. <laughs> you guys, Ashley is another streamer on here. You can sometimes catch her on Wednesdays, if you're lucky. We were just talking about the Z-Bar Summit. You're cryptid now. <laughs> Unicorn. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> That's so weird. So weird. So, whatever. <laughs> when you said that, it reminded me of, uh, well, <laughs> you know that movie Legend with Tom Cruise? They... They did some of the coolest, uh, like, practical effects in that show. Like the mask of the Swamp Hag is super... I've always wanted to re-sculpt her. I gotta show... It's su she's super creepy, but in a good way. Like, the, the facial structure is so good. So creepy. All right, look at this thing. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, Tim Curry is the best. But with this thing, oh my goodness. And look at these fingers. So good. It's just <laughs> everything just pushed to the max. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Enough of that. <laughs> Yeah, that's they did some really really good creature stuff in that in that film, I think. Yeah, Tim Curry, the Minotaur. Oh, I don't know that I've seen her. I haven't got that far yet. You've been playing that game a lot. Too much. <laughs> I, yeah, it's it's really really good. I, I played through, um. Divinity, divinity. Div Every time I say divinity, it reminds me of the like the, uh, the dessert. But it, is it divinity? Original sin two, whatever the one they made before, Baldur's Gate. Yeah. I played that one a lot. And now, now that Baldur's Gate's out, and it's another kind of a... It, it's almost an extension of that game, but with 5e mechanics, you know, which is... I, I love... We I play D&D &D once a month with a couple of my friends, and it was fun making my D&D &D character in Baldur's Gate, <clears throat> which is a dwarf cleric. But then I'm like, the first person you run into is a cleric. <laughs> so it's like a, which clerics are the best? Because clerics are like, they're all things in one. They can heal, deal damage. They can be a tank. Good stuff. So what, what what's your party? I'm curious now. <laughs> Who is your party made up of? I can't remember their names. I made a rogue and just stole everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's awesome. You're like, yoink. This is mine. <laughs> That's a fun way to play. I, I've been having the most fun because I, I made my character, you know, my D and D character, but I haven't been playing as that one. Um, I've been playing as the Dark Urge, <laughs> which is a 
A uh, dragonborn sorcerer. Alright. But he just wants to kill everything. Which is fun. Okay, what the heck is this? What happened? <laughs> nice. And I like I like playing as a bard too. That's a lot of fun. Um, let me do me wild again. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. What did I do? Is this a different piece? Yeah. We'll find out soon. No. Okay. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm just going to do something completely different and just pull everything over, turn symmetry off, and just pull it all over. When it's giving you fits, just push everything to the right, do a mirror and weld, and it fix, should fix itself. There we go, that's better. I guess other developers are angry because Baldur's Gate is better than it needs to be, <laughs> I guess. They're like, hey, you're making us look bad. I don't know who's really saying that, but that's a big it's a big news topic right now. But you know. Act three, so oh, is it? I haven't even gotten there. <laughs> I, I haven't even found all the companions yet. Okay. What's going on? Enter the partial. This have oh it does okay I was like why is that why is that bulging weird <laughs> okay okay that works Eventually, I'll weld these together, but not right now. Okay. That'll work for now. That's weird. What's going on with this? You know, I was playing, um, it's a game called V Rising. You ever heard of that game? It's like vampires. It's like a vampire survival game. It might even, I think it might have started as a Kickstarter. So I was already playing that one when, like, Diablo 4 came out. And... <laughs> Leisure Soupy. There we go. So I'm just trying to get through that. Getting back through V Rising before I really play through Baldur's Gate 3. So I was already into it, I was enjoying it, so. 
I love those kinds of games. Survival. I guess some of them are called cozy games. Like, uh, like Grounded. That's not really that cozy. One came out recently called Palea. It's kind of like Stardew Valley. Okay. Let's make his, uh, shirt collar here. I want a cylinder for this. Here, let's reset the gizmo. This set really didn't work anyway. Just wanted to snap it. I used to play those Leisure Suit Larry games a long time ago. Split unmasked points. Arrow down and then let's fill it with this. Okay. Now for this thing, um, what I want to do is get rid of the caps. So I'm going to do a polygroup by normals, which will isolate anything beyond 45 degrees into a new polygroup. Hey, Christoph, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Okay, so let me turn on double so you can actually see. It leaves me with this ring. I can delete hidden. And then in the center where it splits like this, I'm going to turn on, make sure symmetry is turned on, grab the Z modeler. And then I'm going to insert, whoops, I'm going to insert a line. So I'm going to go to insert. Get them pretty close like this. And then delete this center piece here. Hey, Ashley, are you going to do the sculpt off? Delete hidden. If, if I'm actually at the, the uh, Zebra Summit, I want to compete in the sculpt off, but I'm not going to have a com computer there. And I think I was asking <laughs> Ian and Paul, and they both offered their machines up. So I may do that. going to kind of move these out of the way. So I think it would be fun. I, I always like participating in the sculpt off. It's good times. I don't know yet. Let's see how I feel. I was there when Paul said you could use a set. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can use my office. Louie is so funny. He's always in like when he's whenever he's streaming. He's always in like Howard Cosell mode, <laughs> just like uh, super funny. I guess I should say if he would rather me say uh, WWE mode wrestling. Like those announcers. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, you should you should do it. Did you compete last time? I use compete as a loose term. really need to pull all the way to the side and tucked underneath here. Last the computer was 2020. Nice. I think, I think I've done, I don't know that I did, well, I was judge on one of them. And then I took third place on the second one. 
I think. Well, that's weird. Oh, it's the light. <laughs> that's really strange. Okay, um, add some thickness to this. That was, yeah, I did, when I did third place, I, that was on site. And that was nerve-wracking. Like, because they put you in one of those Noman classrooms there on site, and you're you're in there with a whole bunch of other artists, like really, really good artists. And I'm just like, I, what am I, why am I here? <laughs> so I felt like I had to kind of do a, you know, tell, tell a story and rely on my storytelling skills rather than my sculpting skills. <laughs> Got any tips on how to prepare for a sculpt off? I kind of want to try, but I'm super afraid I won't get it done. Just, well, like Paul and Ian were saying, uh, just practice your sculpt first. Try it and see how far you can get in three hours, you know? Um, and also, uh, I would get either concept or reference or even a collage of reference, like a Pinterest page or something, or like a, um, a pure ref page, something like that, so you know what you're aiming for. And don't don't go too complex with it. Just have a plan, you know? Not going in with a plan is the worst thing you can do. Because you'll for sure run out of time. I'm going to un... Okay, I'm going to apply this thickness. And uncrease everything. Okay, I was afraid of that. Yeah, I, I should probably heed my own advice because I don't I don't really practice. <laughs> I just I just go in oh, just like oh let's just try it, I guess. <laughs> Okay. But if you're new to it, that's a that's a really great way to you know not be so stressed out about it. But I remember being like when I was live, it's it's much much easier when you're not doing it live. But when it is live or when it was live when I did it I had headphones, and I remember, it's kind of a little story I like to tell, but I remember my um, headphone wires, like, going across my chest, and I could hear my heart beating in my ears, because I was so nervous, it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. but it's, it's, it's way, it's way more chill when you're not, when you're just doing online, you know? I mean, you still are uh, streaming live, so it's still still a bit stressful, but not as bad. Oh, it's not in person. <laughs> totally freeze up and forget all the buttons. Well, that's the second thing, right? Is you're on a you're on a strange computer. I had to install my inter user interface and uh, I was, I remember um, my friend uh, Steve Toklowski, he was com competing at the same time in the hard surface and his computer crashed right in the middle of it and he lost a bunch of work and it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it was super stress. Stress levels running high. Yeah, he was not a happy camper, to say the least. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks for hanging out. OK. 
Okay, I'm just kind of filling this up. Because I eventually I want to 3D print him, so I like to try and fill that up. Hey McBobbles, gotta get that built this year. I know, right? That'd be that'd be fun. Yeah, my friend Justin. Justin Gobi Fields, who I'm most likely gonna be staying with at the summit this year. Um he he won the belt one year. They don't actually give you the belt. It's just a prop. But he found out where they, they had it made, and he had one made for himself, which was awesome. Yes, I would love it. Put that little red tie in there that he's known for. Let's get this split. One of the three printing print, printing a, a belt. Well, one year, uh, one year they did do they they 3D printed the winners' sculpts. What in the world? Uh, okay, strange. Looked like there were two two objects occupying the same space. There's not, but it kind of looked that way. Titanium? I didn't even know you could, pr oh look, <laughs> that's, I made a, I made a little extra thing. Oops. Oops. Let's do a group split on that. Let's see. Group split. Okay. Okay, I think this is it. <laughs> Robertson, welcome. Hello. Okay, let's do a uh, better save this. Grab this red color. Oops, not that one, this one. What did I do here? Looks like I accidentally painted that. There we go. Okay, I want to make this a little bit bigger. So what are you guys working on today? Are you sculpting something along with me? I always like to ask that. <laughs> You planning on getting the suit texture going? Yes, I. So I just barely asked Jeffrey, the guy who did the original concept, if he still had that texture floating around, and if he could uh, send it to me. So hopefully I can I can get it from him and then try the noise maker and put it on there. Um, if I was to do the sculpt off, <clears throat> turn into a three hour version of the SpongeBob. <laughs> three hours later. I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm 
use this knife cut brush. Slice the end of that off. Wish it would take on the color that's already there. Need to request that. You're working on an 80s Walkman, like a Sony Walkman? Is that what you're talking about, Brad? That's fun. Used to have one of those back in the day. Before these fendangled iPods. <laughs> you kids. Oh, goodness, what is going on? What does the geo on this thing look like? Uh, you know, I think I'm going to remesh this lower. It's a little too... Or I could Sculptress Pro it either way, but... I'm trying to get that indentation in there. Oh, I remember Soundwave. The little cartridge that turns into a bird, right? Ah, that works. Okay. Let's get his, I kind of want to get his hands done, and then we'll do his face. How does that sound? Check him in perspective. See if that tie is big enough. I could probably make it a little bigger. Pogo, what is Pogo Ball? Sorry, it's not funny if I don't get the reference. <laughs> I apologize. Soundwave held all the cartridges. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I'm trying to remember, I think, uh, I want to say... Paul Gabri has made a version of this guy. So if you want to know what he's talking about, this is Soundwave. And he's got the little, this thing pops open and you can stick cartridges in there. Like he turns into this. See this little cartridge? And this pops open. Did it, did it work? Did it like actually play? I don't think it did. But, and then, and then the little cartridge turns into like a dog or a bird or, yeah, different things. <laughs> Funny. Okay, let's make his hands. Everybody wants to see me make hands. So here we go. These are some crazy. Pokeball was an 80s toy that used to... Oh, that's right! I remember that. My sister had one. It's like a plastic disc with a ball jammed in, in the center of it. I do remember that. Did I? I think I did. Oh, man. Okay. Accidentally busted this into little pieces. Okay, so we got the legs. This, this, this. What? Okay, that's the top. Then these two. Okay, so I got to merge all these down. Merge, merge, merge. Okay, if you ever do that by accident, like I did, um, you can just com merge them all back together and then just do a weld points. And then you can check to see if it welded together by turning dynamic subdivision back on. 
Looks like it worked okay. Funny. Okay. Dog, bird, or bear. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. You can make this these little white cuffs first. <laughs> yeah. Um I'm not liking how the sleeve is ending like this. I don't know what happened here. But you know what I think I'm gonna do? What am I gonna do? Well, Mm -hmm. Be a little lower intensity. Okay, so now I can mask this, flip the mask, and then hopefully I can smooth all this out and fix that issue. There we go. Okay, now we can duplicate this. solo it and I just want a piece of it that will become this little sleeve and if I do sketch or select lasso I can just pick like three of these one two three invert it so it's just this ring and then say delete hidden and everything goes away now I just have this piece and move it down and center the gizmo in that piece so I can scale it down. Let's turn on local symmetry. Kind of center it. We can turn on double so we can see it. Okay, I think I'm just going to cap it off though. Again, for 3D printing purposes. So we'll just do close holes and it will give us. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but. And we'll fill it with white, and there's our little sleevey bit. And we can bring it out just a little bit more. Check it from all sides. And then this this lower sleeve will kind of dictate and, and define how thick the upper sleeve is. Okay, hand. Let's do hands. Grab that color. Because it will take on whatever color you have selected. And then I'm just going to turn the gizmo a little bit so that I can squish this down flat. This will become the palm. Just kind of push it up in there a little bit. And just kind of squeeze it down at the wrist. And then just kind of make it flare out a little bit. Push in the palm side. So I mean, it, it should already kind of look like a hand just with the palm, right? It's like this little, like a mitten without all the fingers on it. Make it a, even more paddly. Paddly, is that a word? 
Let's square this off. Okay, and the thumb will come off over here. So this side is kind of longer, and this side goes into the thumb. Okay. Grab the appendage. Make it long and skinny, and then we'll flip it around. So the skinny end is going into the hand, into the palm there. Okay. And then what I like to do is just sculpt one finger and then duplicate it around. So if we look at the shape of this finger, I like this first, first finger shape. It's kind of flat on the top and then rounded and goes up to be kind of thin up here. So, crank up smooth just to kind of shrink this down on this side. And then for the top, you can kind of use, see the geometry that already exists? You can use that geometry to your advantage. We'll turn it just a little bit. And make these corner poles be the actual poles of the thing. And then we can use, use like H polish would work. Just come along the top right here and just kind of polish it down flat. This. Don't want to push too hard because it'll really destroy it. Okay. Again, from the top, let's make it just a little bit thinner. Maybe we'll use move infinite so we grab both sides. Same with this one. Because the thinner I get this up here, the more the end will be exaggerated. I really like these fingers. And then they're kind of arcing backwards a little bit. So let me get a bigger brush and just kind of arc it backwards. Like a banana in reverse. Okay. I know I think the the top is a little too sharp, so I'm going to smooth that down just so it's not so harsh. You want to balance your edges. You don't want to just put edges for edges sake. Okay. And then we can center that gizmo. Kind of align it down that finger. I usually don't go to this length, but it's easier to duplicate around once you have it kind of in place. So you just hold control, drag another one, and I usually like to make this one smaller. Like this. And then I'm going to pay attention to how close they are, like this spacing right here. And these actually go to a point, but I don't like to take my fingers to a, a point. I get them kind of close, but I usually leave a gap right there for, there's so many reasons, for rigging, for UVs, for retopology. Everything is better and easier when you have a, a gap in your fingers. And you actually do, if you look, they don't come to a point right, right here. It's like a, it comes down, goes a little bit across, then goes back up. It's just so much easier to do it that way. Okay. Duplicate this one and make it a lot smaller. And then I also like to arc them, like turn them inwards like this. Maybe down a little bit. Well, this one's actually flaring out and up. Whoops, get back to your hand. So I'm going to go the opposite with this one. And I forgot to do the polygroups as I went, so they're all in the same polygroup, but that's okay. We'll just do a auto groups. Actually, I'm going to hide this one. So I want to keep that polygroup on the end there. Now do auto groups. Unhide and then mirror and weld. 
Okay. You guys are awfully quiet today. Usually I can't keep up with chat. What's going on? You guys are just so enthralled. <laughs> okay, for the thumb, I usually turn it and then drop it. Make it a little stumpier. So I don't do an overall scale, just a bit stumpier. Hey, what's up, Ian? How you doing? Kind of bend it down like this, and the thumb is the thing that's almost the, the most important digit to make it actually look and feel like a hand. <laughs> what's up, Zofo? TV's Big Adventure. Kind of like <laughs> hey, what's up, Mark? Yep. Working on my character, thinking about what's good for the sculpt off. Nice. I'm doing good. I saw you guys all. Were you, were you part of the the group sculpting this morning? Let's see, I'm gonna do put that in its own group. Okay. So now that all the fingers in place, now I can adjust this palm. I don't. This is kind of a something that happens quite often is people will leave their palms too fat. And if you look at your hand, if I turn it right to the camera, it's it's almost like a wedge that just goes I'd have to get back further. Let me see. So it just kind of goes in a in a wedge. It doesn't go down and then poof out. So right at the fingertips is the thinnest, well, minus the knuckles, but. Oh, this morning I was part of a big group a few days ago. Nice. Hey, what's up, Julie? How are you? Julie, I'm, I'm getting more people interested, so I think I'm going to start that soon. Um, I, what I'm talking about is uh, I, ha I do an acceleration pro <clears throat> program, uh, which we meet we meet once a week, and I give feedback on your characters once a week. It's kind of like a mentorship. Well, it is. A, it's not kind of like it is. It is a mentorship, and uh, so all of the people that were in there before which I see, what, one, two, three, three of you in here, four of you? I think I might have told you, but I'm, you're, the alumni are just going to, you can just stay in there. Because I'm turning it into lifetime access. So if any of you watching are interested in my acceleration program, please send me a message either... If you're already a student, you can send me a message, a direct message on uh, Discord. Or if you're not a student yet, you can just send me a, a message through my main page, which is 3D Character Workshop. Hey, what's up, Jerome? How are you? Yeah, so I'm going to turn it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it lifetime access. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna do it a little bit differently. Hey, Jerome, you know you know Jeffrey, right? You work with him? Oh man, his hands are way small. Look at those puny little thing. I always I always do <laughs> I always make my my hands wait, look at it. He's like do you remember when Pee Wee I, I think he was the first person I've seen that grabs like those little tiny hands and then uses them like like tucks them in his sleeve. <laughs> That's what these feel like. <laughs> yeah, ship it. Job's done. Okay, I need to split, split it off. Yeah, I really like this design. You know, I, I've seen a lot of caricatures of Pee Wee, and they are, most of them don't really hit his uh, likeness or his like vibe, you know? And I feel like this one is, is really, really good. 
Uh, let's see. So split hidden. I meant to say split hidden. There we go. Yeah, we'll kill some all. Kiwi hands. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's compare. Let's get him there. Even bigger, I think. But now his fingers are too wide, I think. They're feeling okay. Okay, now that they're bigger, let's adjust them. Shrinking that wrist down. I'm trying to get the flow going from the wrist down through the finger so it doesn't look like a balloon animal. That's another thing you should watch out for. Is the flow from one object to the next. Super important. Same with this side. I'm not putting these knuckles in. At least not yet. And then for the thumb, another trick you can do is I really like to, like, uh, kind of break it and push it back. Shorten it. That also that also helps make it read like a thumb. As if you kind of get that kickback spoon shape going on. Okay. And then this area, too, I really need to, because the shape it's making is wrong. It's like doing this thing, right? And if you look at this, it's doing this. <laughs> That's not the same. Let's fix it. So I'm going to bend this a little bit. You know, I think I'm going to bring it down a little closer like this. And then just adjust that palm to match. Okay. I'm going to mask this off just so I can get in there. And use uh, Move Infinite so I'm making sure I'm adjusting both sides all the way through. a little better. I really want this change of direction. So coming up from the thumb all the way to about here, then changing direction and going up into the wrist, up into the arm. And then the back, I want this to sweep from here I usually don't talk, talk about what I'm thinking about this much. <laughs> Give you a little insight into my head. There we go. Okay. Gotta give my hand a rest for a minute. <clears throat> Okay, I want to shrink down the, the ends of these fingers. They're feeling a little, a little too exaggerated. I like them, but they're a little too much. So I'm just going to shrink them down with smooth just a bit. So it's not such a hot dog hand. Same with that thumb.
<laughs> Thanks, Mark. Okay. Yeah, hands are a fantastic exercise. Fantastic. And I'm not going to bother with the the pads underneath here just yet. I'm just looking for silhouette and shape. And the connection point's a little bit smaller than what I have, and that's okay. I want to see if what happens if I scooch these together. Scooch. Is that a word? Scooch. Okay. And then I want to bring oh, auto save. Okay. What's up, David? Hey, you're right. Thanks. And smaller and kicked up a little bit more. <laughs> Scooch. I think it's in a I think it's in a song. Scooch on over here. Okay. That's better. All right. There we go. Cool. All right, let's get that face worked on. I don't know what's going on with this side. Okay, some somehow some way I lost symmetry. So, in order to fix this, let's go turn off local symmetry and since ZBrush likes to mirror from screen uh screen left to screen right, which is his right to left. Um you want to get I don't know why just being right-handed I tend to work on this side of the screen. I don't I think just because it's closer to my right hand. Um, but this side's broken and this side's good. So I need to get this side over here in order to mirror it back again. So under this menu that I have, this menu comes with my interface, by the way, for free if you want it. It's just over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Come down here to mirror, click it, and you can see it mirrored it over here. Now this side is bad. So now I just click mirror and weld. And now both sides are good, and I make sure symmetry is turned on, and now we're good to go. Okay, so I'm going to save this again. Okay. I think I need to take a tiny, tiny little break and blow my nose, because I've had an itchy nose all day. Is there some special process to make this character ready for a game, or is it good to go? No, there's a special process. It's called retopology, and you would have to do the retopology. Uh, usually I do it in a different program, like Maya or Cinema 40 or something like that. And yeah, I, I typically don't do my retopology here in ZBrush because ZBrush is more of a digital sculpting application. Um, so yeah, that's what you do. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. I'm just going to go... Go blow my nose. I'll be right back. One sec.
Okay. Welcome back, welcome back. Here we go. <laughs> hey, Ashley, how are you? Thanks for not taking off. It still looks like there's 70 people still watching. I appreciate you hanging out. All right, let's work on his face. Turn the... It's like I have a big gap in here that I'm going to have to fix in a little bit. All right, so let's start to attach some of these things, and I want to make uh, some nostrils for him. I think that'll help a lot. And then um, give him some eyebrows and his hair, and give him that uh, well-known peewee, like how he's biting his tongue and smiling. He does that all the time. I think I have uh, perspective turned on. Oh no. Hold on a second. I gotta make sure. It's making my music skip, so I know it's hitting my CPU hard. I'll turn my music off for a second. Goodness. So, just a little insight for you all. Um, yeah, tribal peewee. I should probably turn these. Well, I should still talk while I'm doing this. Um, so, ZBrush is a very, very CPU heavy application. It doesn't use much RAM. It doesn't use much GPU. It's mainly CPU. Just because it's how, it, how it's uh, designed and built. And sometimes when you stop, when you stop rotating, you probably don't want me talking about this. It's, it's kind of a, it's a 2D pixels with Z depth. That's why it's named ZBrush because it's got Z depth. And when you're not rotating, it doesn't really calculate all the pixels except for where you're sculpting. And as soon as you go to rotate your model, or if you zoom in a lot and you're spinning around, sometimes it's, it'll ping your CPU really, really hard. So hard, in fact, that your music will skip or your stream will stop. <laughs> so I need to be very, very careful with it. But if you ever run into something like that, that's what's going on. You just have to, have to be careful with it. Yeah, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> there we go. Little little nostril action. <laughs> okay. You know what might be fun that I haven't tried for a while? Is actually uh since this this smile line is so prominent, is actually blocking out his cheek. Um, so, just to let you in on a secret, the blocking out stuff, it's only there to help you. So you don't need to go. You can either add shapes or not add shapes. It's all dependent on what you need and what you feel like is going to help you get to the end, right? So a lot of people will just add shapes to add shapes, and that's not. That's not the goal. It's kind of like, I always, I always compare learning how to sculpt to learning how to play a musical instrument. You don't just add notes to add notes, right? It's, it's got to fit, it's got to work, and it needs to help the, the song progress. So I was just looking at this cheek piece, and I was thinking maybe it might help to put an extra sphere here to help me get that smile line because I could grab this detail brush and just do something like this, right? But it's not very editable. I can't tweak it and I can't get it where I want it to be. Yeah, be careful not to eternally get in this. You know, that's not a bad thing though, Ian, because I feel like most of it is done in the blockout stage. It's like you're making your cake in the blockout stage. 
So if the cake is not good, the frost no I always say no amount of frosting is gonna make the taste the cake taste good. Um or look good for that matter. So yeah, spend as much time as you feel like you need to in block out mode. Sometimes I don't even I, I never leave block out mode. Like my finished my finished sculpts are still in in some form of block out mode. Like I, I've been playing with this mobile sculpting app a little bit recently and I did a I did a, a space girl and I just left her in blockout mode. I don't know if I'd recommend that, but you know my my fear to my failure to commit my fear of commitment. <laughs> okay, so this upper piece is going to turn into this cheek all the way back to his like his hair and his ear and I'll just push that into the head because that's already kind of defined by the object underneath it but what I'm looking for is to use this piece gosh dang it come on camera cooperate with me is to bring it down here and have it become a smile line right here yeah, unnamed mobile application. Yep, yep. Looks like a kind of looks like a dog with big jowls. <laughs> I don't want that much volume in this. And I could grab the object underneath and just kind of push it in. And then eventually I'll just, you know, weld this in and then smooth it out. Same with this back here. The only thing I'm really caring about is the smile line for this. That kind of goes and turns. his face in an interesting way like it that, usually the smile line ends right behind the nostril right but the way Jeffrey's drawn it is kind of a very illustrative way to indicate that smile line and I want to I want to get it as much as I can without breaking the sculpt and making it look weird that's kind of what I'm after So it'll all make sense when I combine it back together. Bring that back up. Especially this bit, and then I'll give him some eyelids and hopefully it all works out in the end. Okay, so with his mouth, it's still in Sculptor's Pro mode. So I'm just gonna cut this in because I have enough geometry there. See all of these triangles? That means I can use a masking brush like this and mask it off. Nightbot's busy tonight. Today. Tonight. Okay. So somewhere in the neighborhood of this shape Flip it around, stick my gizmo right in the center, and just pull back the mouth like this. When I'm using Sculptress Pro workflow, that, this is typically how I'll make a mouth. Sometimes I'll block out the upper lip and the bottom area, but if I'm going, this is this way is much quicker. I can get some, especially if the lip is not that defined. His upper and lower lip is pretty straight with his head. So I can just pull this back. What that does is it stretches the polygons like this. 
So I just turn on Sculptress Pro mode again. Just I go down a little lower. There we go. Just give myself enough geometry. I'm going to turn my smoothing way up. It's probably a little too dense. There we go. That matches everything else. <clears throat> And I can kind of flood fill this piece because when I weld it, I want the matching areas or the, the areas that are touching to be the same density because it'll give me a better seam when I when I weld it together. Hey Tattoon, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Every time I see Tattoon, I think of Tatooine. <laughs> Star Wars. Okay, so before we get too far, I think I do want to uh, weld these together and just, just keep going. But I'm going to do a save as in case I need to go back. It's always good to do that. So do you not really do the Q-Mesh technique anymore? Uh, not really, Ian. No. I've kind of... I've I've kind of just leaned into the sculptress method. Yeah, w ever since I found Remesh by Union and Sculptress Pro, it just gives me all of the all the information I need to continue. So I just I just end up sticking with that. Okay, so let's do I'm trying to decide if I just want to merge everything together. I think I do. I'm just going to go for it. Let's do it. So we have this head. You can always duplicate this. So now I have two if I ever need to go back to my blocked out version. I'm wondering what is the benefit of sculpting the face by adding geometry instead of directly sculpting on it? Um, the benefit is editability. Is that a, yeah, it's, it, re, it remains editable for longer and I can just control the shapes of it way easier especially when i'm doing stylized characters like this where i need the surface to be nice and clean and my lines to be clean and interact with each other in a clean way um, it just gives me all of these extra um all these extra things so these extra benefits okay Okay, so I'm going to merge everything together. And how to do that is I just kind of put the gizmo in the center of the of everything. We gotta turn off the symmetry for a second. Center it, turn it back on, and make sure everything I need is, is here. And then I go into this gear and click on remesh by union, and that will stitch everything together. Hit accept. And I really, really love Remesh by Union rather than Dynamesh. I get this question and asked every single time I stream, why don't you use Dynamesh anymore? And I do when I'm, when I'm doing certain specific things. But for the most part, I've changed my whole workflow over to Remesh by Union. And because uh, if you'll notice, this mesh looks exactly the same. The only areas that it touches or that it affected were these... Uh, the stitched areas. So if we zoom on in here, it basically only affected this, these lined where where the objects intersect. It didn't rebuild everything. You can see I still have my bigger triangles back here. I still have my quads here. It it didn't really affect anything except for the combining. So what that means is it keeps my hard edges if I want to and now I can come in here with, whoops, with um, Sculptress Pro turned on with my smooth brush, and I can smooth this out. I just wanted to show you my wireframe so you can see how it's getting smoothed out. See that? And I, I just, this is my favorite workflow. So 
so I can go through and like like these nostrils right here where it connects to the nose. I can smooth that out. It's like uh, it's like using traditional clay, putting two clumps of clay together, and then using your thumbs to smooth it out. Right? It's very similar to that. So then you can choose what to smooth out and what to keep. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit smaller with the resolution here. Ah. This. When I tried to make a Boolean mesh, it stitches all the poly groups together. Um, yeah, so Dave, David, essentially this is, oh, I didn't turn symmetry back on. Okay, hold on a second. I got to do the mirror thing and the mirror and weld thing. And then turn on symmetry. There we go. We're good to go. So uh, remesh by union is essentially running a Boolean operation without Boolean anything. So it will stitch everything together. If you want to, when you do a Boolean, if you don't want your objects to be stitched together, but you want to run a Boolean on something, you, the objects that you don't want stitched don't include in the Boolean operation, if that makes sense. So. When I do Boolean stuff, I usually put everything I want to Boolean inside of a folder, and then I Boolean the folder. So if I make, for example, if I hit Control F to make a folder, I, I'll usually call it Boolean, so I know what that folder's purpose is. And then the folder has a gear right here, and you can do your uh, Boolean folder right there, or Boolean with subdivs if it has subdivs. That's how I. That's how I keep my uh my booleans organized and not boolean the whole scene together but yeah that's kind of the nature of a boolean is it will it will stitch everything just like remesh by union does okay and i can come through here and do the same thing to the back of all this Smooth it all out. Okay. He's looking all weird without teeth. So let's get that going. I'm just using pinch. I'm using the alt pinch so it actually pulls it up in space. It's weird. Got some weird things going on with some of these poly groups. I, actually, I don't need the poly groups anymore. I'm just going to hit Control W and get rid of them. Okay. This is a really interesting face to, to solve. Much bigger cheeks. You guys hear my fan in my microphone by chance? It's pretty hot in here, so I have my fan on. Inflating this cheek area just a little bit. Can you please show how to Boolean keep some tools in and out of Boolean? 
tried to do that reorganizing sub tools messing with that start i don't use don't use the start arrow anymore that's kind of an old it's kind of an old thing um, before they had folders that's how you would organize everything but yeah you don't have to use that anymore i'll go to no fan but my ac might be masking it <laughs> What were you doing in Maxon? I don't work for Maxon. I'm a volunteer here. Yeah, David, hold on a sec. I'll, I can show you it in a minute. Let me get some his teeth and tongue in so I can make some decent progress. And then I can show you. It's really, really powerful stuff. Okay, let's see. Let's polish this down flat. Get some teeth in there. Yes, this is ZBrush. <laughs> Two front teeth. Nice tribute, Pewee. Thank you. I'm trying my best. Yeah, he was a he was a big, big part of my childhood growing up, with his movie, with his television show. Big, 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 big impact on a lot of people. I think. Okay. I feel like I need to pull this back now. <clears throat> this is kind of a hard nut to crack. The likeness. And now that all this is in place, I feel like I need to pull this all up. Your lives. Thanks for inspiring me to keep studying. Yeah, Annie, you're welcome. Thank you for letting me know this. That's great. And when they when uh, Maxon has been doing these this series lately called Ask Ask the Instructor or Ask the something I'm trying to remember but they're giving away uh, T-shirts and stuff when you watch it they'll they'll paste they'll post some codes in there so it's a, a good reason to watch other than the the great knowledge they're dropping this ordered one hope. Hopefully it'll be here before the summit end up going. Okay. No, no, no. Not not ZBrush. T-shirt. A T-shirt. To be clear. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna reset this. It's quite red. I'm going to dumb it down a little bit. Maybe. Oops. Okay, <laughs> go to mask it off here every time I use ZBrush I find myself diving too deeply into complex details that's a common issue yep I'm to create stylized content like the example you've shown but making it look appealing proves to be challenging thank you for sharing your workflow absolutely and I have I have years and years and years of live streams that you can not that you want to watch years and years of live streams but uh, you can go back, you can do a search for my name. It's Shane Olson, O-L-S-O-N, uh, and with ZBrush. Use Shane Olson ZBrush, and you'll find a whole bunch of my videos of, of the past, and you can see me do different, different characters, different workflows. Okay, come on. No, 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 no. Oh, that's why. Okay, it's the same polygroup. There we go. That's what we want. Split hidden. What I was trying to do was lighten this up a little bit. Get a bit of a gradient. Thanks, Neil. There you go. Okay, now we can adjust his mouth around that tongue. And I also teach a I teach a big course online if you really want to learn how to how to do it. Um, I've had it running for the last five years. And you can find that over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. A lot of my students are here watching now. <laughs> like the blue from Jungle Book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll take that compliment. <laughs> That it does. I'm super humbled and excited for every day checking out the community. I have a private Discord server for the students. It's super active. Um, in fact, I can show you a little preview of it. So here, since they added new forum channels, it's really nice. So I have, anyway, you see these uh, double, double talk icons. Um, you can see the, yeah, all the student work in here. Lots and lots of great work being done. Yeah. And there's there's beginner section, monthly challenges, final renders. Yeah, this is this is the one you want to check out. Lots and lots of characters being done. Uh, 
But anyway, that comes with the workshop if you're interested. Okay. Enough pimping the course. <laughs> So this is a, tr a technique I really like to do. My buddy, I think, man, who showed me this? I'm trying to remember if it was Steve James or somebody else watching. But turning your uh, character's head transparent and then drawing the eyelids right on the eyeball so it sticks to the surface right through the head but so you can see that line and you can see it stick. It's really... A really good way to do it. So it's something like that. And then just tap on the surface to add thickness. Split unmasked points. And then just come in here and edit this. I'm going to do a uncrease all. Add us uh, dynamic subdivisions. What's somebody asking for it? Oh, he, no, it's it's a private Discord. It's not public. It comes with the course. I'm thinking about making a public section, but I haven't yet. <laughs> red eyelids. Everybody needs red eyelids. Okay. I'm also starting up, for anybody who is interested, I'm also starting up my mentor program again. It's called the Acceleration Program. It's where you get weekly feedback from me. So if you're interested in that, you can always uh, message me on my website. It's 3dcharacterworkshop.com. That's where my... That's this right here. You can get my free brushes. You can also send me a message right here and say, hey, I'm interested in the acceleration program. Tell me more. Be happy to share. Okay, let's get some eyebrows in here. And also huge thanks to Maxon for letting me do these live streams and share my course stuff with you. Okay, so to make these brows the same way I made the eyelids, you just draw on the surface right along that brow line. Go from thin to thick. Thin again. Don't want to get too close because they'll kind of snap across to each other. I just kind of do uh, one line on each to make a big quad in the middle, and then I'll split it usually. And then maybe split it, split it. And then split it again like that. And if you hold down Alt and drag anywhere on the surface of the object, it will clear out and clean up all of the leaders, all those tails, whatever you want to call them. Then your brush size will determine the thickness of what it's going to be when you tap on the surface like this. And then you'll notice it masked off the thing that you were drawing it on. And so to split this off, all you have to do is go to Split Unmask Points, which is under the Subtool menu if you're looking for it over here on the right. There you go. Then you can arrow down to select it, because arrow down just arrows down in your Subtool list. Let's see, at times we encounter a choice between using a beveled model or a textured approach for a pupil. Which option is more advantageous? 
Um, it depends on your your final result. Like what what are you after? Um, there's also like a sculpted eye, like like uh, Michelangelo, his like David. You know, he's got that sculpted iris and everything. So it really really depends on the end goal. If you're trying to get your character into a game engine, and that game is using the beveled eyeball with the cornea and everything, then that's how you build it. Um, if you're going for a toy that has, like, say, a stamp of the pupil on there, book a stamp, then you most likely will not bevel it out. You know, it just really depends on your goal. SkinColoredEyebrows.com. <laughs> it probably exists. Um, you have to do model a realistic cookie for a job. Do you guys have any tips? Um, I really don't. I do stylized characters. That's kind of my thing. So I don't really have uh, uh, any any advice for you there, other than get very 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 good reference, and and use the ref. You can even use the references for, as textures on your object. Use substance painter to do your textures with. Okay, I want to build up sides. Yes, I'm doing PB's voice, voice in my head. I won't subject you to it. <laughs> Just building up these little smile creases here. I need more geometry. That's and that's the beauty of Sculptress Pro right there. Is if you want more, you just crank it up and you just paint it where you want it. I'm gonna paint this out and re recrease it again. Just so I can smooth it all. Okay, now that that's done. A really tricky kind of illustrative smile. You'll see me spinning my model around a lot, and I really recommend doing the same to look at it from all angles. And the reason I turn my character to the side like this is because I'm right handed and I have like one good arc in my wrist and my elbow. So if I ever have an arc that I need to hit, I'll turn my camera all the way on its side, or turn my sculpt on its side, so I can give it a good, good effort there. Okay. Let's work on this ear a little bit. And then I think the hair is gonna bring it all together with the pupils. Yeah, thanks for that tip, Neil. Yeah, you can 
you on the smooth brush if you just want to add geometry without smoothing it out you can uh, turn the intensity down on your smooth brush and then you can just add geometry detail without losing the what's going on underneath it you don't want to smooth it out sometimes I'm just using the fill brush. This fill brush is fantastic. It's I have to give credit to uh, SK. He's another streamer on here. He made that brush. I just I just tweaked it to my liking. But um, he offers his brushes up for free as well. I should go grab them. Got some really nice ones. Just a little bit more. It's a little too harsh, I think. And whenever you you see some anomalies like this, I can't get rid of. It's most likely, yep. It's most likely due to the underlying geometry. So you want to hit Shift F to always check your geometry and see what's going on under there to make sure if there's something giving you grief like this. It's like, what is that? So this is what Neil was talking about. You can turn your Z intensity on your smooth brush. I'm holding down shift right now. See, holding down shift, turning the Z intensity down, and then I can just flood fill my this area with geometry without affecting, like without changing the sculpts or the volume or anything. I'm just changing the geometry. So I'm right here, so I can give myself a lower eyelid here in a second. Okay. Now I can turn the Z intensity back up, turn Sculptress Pro off, and now I can smooth it out. Do you possess any experience with traditional paper-based drawing? Uh, I used to back in the in high school and stuff. I used to sketch all the time before I realized I was better at sculpting um I'll, I'll play with like photoshop and procreate sometimes but i spend all my time sculpting most for the most part there we go that's better i want it to go this high up in here See, I'm checking my arcs, making sure it all looks okay. Checking this S curve. <laughs> Makes me laugh. I think I might pull his smile up even more than this. All right, David, are you still here? I, I'm, I haven't forgotten about your Boolean request. Need to give him another tooth. Okay. Let me save this out, and I'll do a really, a really fast demo for you. Hopefully you guys don't mind me doing that. Got about nine minutes left. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to this other tool here. It's just a sphere. Zoom in on it. All right, let's change it to a color we can see. In fact, let's put a material on it that's this normal map material just for fun. Then you can see exactly what the surface is doing. Well, now I'm changing my mind because <laughs> I want to do some colors because you guys, I want, I want you to see how the colors get taken on. Okay, so I'm going to start out with maybe uh, purple. This obnoxious purple. It's really bright. Let's go down. 
That's better. Okay. So we have this 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 shape here. And if I want to boolean something out of here, I'll use a cylinder and I'll change the color to maybe like a pink. Draw two cylinders on here. And then I'm going to push these cylinders in here like this. Just really simple boolean operation like this. And then I'm going to split it. So split unmasked points. And make sure we're showing these two. Okay. And then I'm going to put these both in a folder. So control F, call it boolean. And then put these cylinders inside that folder. Okay, because I want to subtract these cylinders out of this sphere. So I'm going to click on subtract, which is this second icon over here. Okay. And then if I turn on live boolean, which is the button right up here, it will subtract those cylinders out. Now I can turn on dynamic subdivision on the sphere and turn on dynamic subdivision on the cylinder. So now we have a really clean cylinder here. I can turn up the smooth one more so it's super clean. And you'll notice that it's taking on the color of the cylinders, okay? So now the next thing is I'm going to make, well, let's just do something crazy. Let's do, um, let's just grab something weird. Like maybe something detailed, maybe this thing. Okay, I'm going to grab this sphere again, click and drag. And I'm going to change this to blue, like a light blue, I guess, and fill it, and then split it off. Okay, so now we have this blue piece, and I'm going to push it into the surface like this. Whoops, got to grab the blue piece. Okay, push it into the surface like this. Now, since it's in the folder, if I turn on subtract, you'll see it's being subtracted out of here, which is awesome, right? It looks great. If I don't want it to subtract out of here, I want to keep it, then I, I can grab this blue thing, pull it out of the folder, let go. Now when I rotate the camera, it's, not, it's no longer getting Boolean, okay? There's no more Boolean happening, okay? So if I want this shape, to become real like uh because this is this is a live boolean it's a preview of what's going to happen when you actually want it to uh, be usable okay because if i look at this sphere you can see it's still a sphere if you look at the actual geometry and the cylinder is still a cylinder it's just sitting there but if i want it to actually work and be usable as a as a mesh then i go up here to this gear and I click on, since this has subdivisions, okay, I do a Boolean with sub D. It's, this is a dynamic subdivisions, okay? I'm going to click that. It's going to do its thing. And now it hides the folder. And then it makes a new object down here. So here's the new object. Okay, and notice the blue did not get Boolean out of it. Okay, so here's the final object. This is... This is what the geometry looks like. So you can see that around the edges, it has been stitched just like remesh by union. So like, like I said, remesh by union is like doing a Boolean operation without doing a Boolean operation. It just does the stitching part, okay? But if I had a polygroup in here, now, I'm going to hide, I'm going to actually delete the, the, what it generated. Okay, that's gone. Go back to this sphere. Let's unhide everything. Okay. And I'm going to grab this. And I'm just going to do a control W to make a polygroup out of it. Let me make a brighter one so you can see it. Okay, so now we have a polygroup in here. And I think it will get rid of it if we Boolean these together. I'm not sure, because I think that's what you were asking me, correct? Um, so I can also turn off live boolean. Then you can see the you can see the polygroups better, and you can see where your cylinders are at and what things are doing. 
I'm going to put this blue back in the folder just for fun, and I'm going to grab this cylinder and pull it out of the folder. So now the, the blue is getting subtracted, and the cylinder is not. Okay, that's how you can control it. So whatever you put outside the folder will not get calculated into there. Okay, so now I have this cylinder, or the sphere, and I have these being subtracted out of there, and now I have some polygroups on that sphere, but I, I don't know if they'll go away or not. We'll try it. So again, I'm going to go to this gear and do Boolean with subdiv. It's going to do it. And then let's see. Oh, it kept it. So there, your uh, polygroups are still there. And it also makes a polygroup out of the thing that gets subtracted from the surface, which is really handy to have. But it is, uh, it is poly paint. So you have to have the amount of uh, vertices, dots, on your model to hold that poly paint. So you'll notice that around these edges isn't as clean as the original Boolean because you have less vertices to hold that poly paint. So it gets streaked a little bit. You, it still brings it over, but it's streaking it a little bit. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions about that? That's how you that's how you do booleans. I can turn live boolean off. Turn these cylinders off. And then if you want to get super tricky, then you can subtract items out of items and that that kind of uh is that pertains to in what order things are in. So if I want to subtract, let's see. Let's grab this, this cylinder here, okay, and I'm going to put it like this. Okay, and say I want to subtract this cylinder out of the sphere, but n I don't want to subtract it out of this. Okay, and I think that's where you're kind of getting tripped up too. So let me see if I can do this. So if I subtract both of these, turn on live boolean, and they're both getting subtracted, and they're both get, uh, cutting out of the sphere. But if I want to say, let's see. Yeah, if I put the start right there, you can use the start arrow within a folder. Okay. Or I can drag this above it. It works downwards, right? Or I can turn on this arrow. Let's see here. Trying to remember. You have to move your camera in order for it to work. It's being cut, cut. Yeah, so if I hit the start arrow here, this cylinder is only getting is only cutting out of this. Does that make sense? So the cylinder is only cutting the blue. So it's starting with the blue, cylinder is cutting it out. Next what menu is create folder? I'm not using a keyboard. Oh, that's right. Um, let me see. I think I think it's down here. Where is it at? Oh, right there. New folder, right there. And you can you can put as many folders as you want and make make sure that they're not cutting out of each other. And you can experiment with you know putting putting different things above different things or putting it out of the folder in the folder try different you know what's getting cut out of what so now since it's starting here this cylinder is cutting out of the the sphere and the blue piece but the blue isn't getting isn't cutting out of the the purple sphere so there's just different ways you can play with the order of things to try and get it to do what you want it to do. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. Back to Peewee for a second. Put him in. His skin is very pale. I was hoping to get a little further than this, but that's okay. Grab that cheek color and just kind of warm him up a little bit. Off by Boolean.
There we go. I think once he gets his hair and his eyes in there, I need to move his eyes closer together. They're too far apart. There's some tweaking I got to do on him. But anyway, that, that is where I'm going to stop today. Thank you, everybody, so much for hanging out with me today and watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, again, I sculpt every single Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific, so you can catch me every Monday live here. And I also give away my brushes and my user interface and my ruler file for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can go grab it over there. And I also teach an online workshop. You're welcome to check it out at the same address and join us. So thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful week. I will see you all next week and consider joining the zebra sculpt off it'll be a lot of fun so all right guys have a good one thanks everybody we'll see you later bye